Hi everyone, and welcome to my next video tutorial, which is going to be focused on compressing our static files in Django so that we can improve the loading times of our websites. So let's go on ahead and get started. Now, the first thing as always is you need to have a project to which you want to apply this functionality towards. So as you can see here, I do have a simple Django project here up and running. And I also have it open here in Visual Studio Code. So make sure you've got that in place. Another thing that I'd recommend that you have set up and ready is to have your static files ready to go. So in my case here, in my project, I have a static directory here. And in my static directory, I have a CSS folder and a JS folder. So for my CSS and JavaScript files, and as we can see, I have a styles.css file. And I also have a JavaScript file known as app.js. And this is in my base directory, as you can see here. If I navigate to my settings.py file of my project, if I were to scroll down, as you can see here, I have my static URL set up. And I also have static files dirs here as well, just to tell Django where to serve my Django, um, my static files in Django from. So it's looking in the base directory for the static folder. So as we can see here, it's looking for static. And then of course, it's pointing to this particular um, directory that we have here. And then of course we have our CSS and JavaScript folders as well. Now in my case here, if I head on over to my Django app, so I have a Django app here, I have my templates directory here. And in my base.html file here, this is where I'm actually loading those static files. So I'm essentially just loading in my external CSS file, so styles.css that we just saw. So in the static folder, in the CSS folder, styles.css. And I'm also loading in my JavaScript file here known as app.js. So from the static folder in the JS folder, app.js. And I'm loading that in base.html. And of course that is being loaded across all of the templates in my application. So if I just head on back to the Explorer here, that's going to be the base.html. And of course that is looking for the static files from the static folder. So JS, app.js, as we can see here, JS, app.js. And if I were to scroll up for the CSS here, it's looking for in the static folder, CSS, um, styles.css. Right, so I just wanted to show you the early workings here of what you need to have in advance before you continue with this tutorial. Because remember, we're compressing our static files. So you need to have some static files to begin with, and that means you need to at least have it set up correctly. Uh, final thing that I do want to, of course, go ahead and mention is, of course, what we can see in terms of the URL for our static files. So, for example, if we go to our project, and I'm just going to make sure it's running. And as you can see, it is. And if I were to right click on, let's say my index.html page and say view page source, let me go ahead and zoom in. Okay, now this part is gonna be important for when we compress our static files. So make sure you just pay attention here to the href here. So it's looking under the static folder, our CSS folder styles.css. If I click on that, I can see all of my logic for CSS in place from that particular file. And also if I were to scroll down to the JavaScript file, so here static JS app.js, I can see all of the logic that's been defined there as well. All right, so just something that I wanted to mention just so that you're aware of uh, everything in place here. So this URL is gonna change here to a URL that's been cached because we want to essentially go on ahead and optimize and hence compress our static files. So just a bit of an overview before we begin. So just make sure you have that all into place that you have your static files ready so that we can continue with the process. All right, so that's the first thing you need to do. Now let's go ahead and actually dive in with everything. Okay, so now that we have everything um, in mind, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and set up uh, the compression with the Django compressor library. So what we're going to do is just follow the relevant steps as we go through the process. The first you want to install the Django compressor library. So uh, we can go ahead and copy the following, go to our command prompt and you want to just stop your 
uh, server and you just want to say pip install django underscore compressor. So you want to install that library. So we just want to give it a moment. So it's going to take uh, just a moment to install. And there we go, it's been installed. Great. So we got that set. Next, we want to add compressor to our list of installed apps. So I'm just going to copy compressor. Then I want to navigate to my Django project settings.py file. So I'm going to go to settings.py. And what I'm going to do is just scroll up to my list. Okay, so here's my list of installed apps. And I'm just going to add this here at the bottom. So there is compressor. So make sure you've added it to your list of installed apps. Right, so we've got that in place. Next, what we need to do is we need to go on ahead and add in our static files finder here. So essentially, as we can see here, we are going to um, be using by default the Django static files contrib app, which is already set up for us whenever we go on ahead and create a, a Django um, project by default. So we need to make sure that we have this static files finder in place here to make sure that we can utilize this library without any hassles. So what you can do is you can copy the following as is, and you can add this anywhere. I would recommend just under your list of installed apps. So I'm just going to add it in like so. So make sure you've added in your static files finders and make sure you have the compressor app in your list of installed apps. Okay, so we've got that in place. Great. Now we don't need to do anything as of this moment, what we need to do now is we need to make sure that we have static root in place here. So let's go ahead and do that. So while we have static root here, the variable, we can just copy that name and we can go down in our settings.py file. And here, just under static files, there's, I want to say static root. And I'm going to go ahead and set it as base underscore dir. And I'm going to set it as static files. Okay, so that's going to be the location where I want to collect all of my static files. And this is going to collect all of the static files that are also um, part of the Django admin on uh, the, the back end that's behind the scenes. Now, I'd recommend that you just stop your server. So my server, as you can see, is stopped. We're also going to get lots of errors. So just make sure you just stop your server as we're doing all of this, because we need to configure everything first. Okay, so make sure you've got static root defined so that you have that here. So essentially speaking in your settings.py file, you should have uh, the following here in place as of this moment. Okay, so let's continue. So we've got that set. Next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and load in the compression tags. Okay, so we're going to have to alter it slightly, but not to worry, we'll get straight to it. So I'd recommend you keep your settings.py file here open for the moment. And then we can go to Explorer. Let's go to our template where we are loading our CSS and JavaScript file. So let me go to web app. Let me go to my templates directory. And I'm going to use base.html because that is inherent, that is extending on all my templates in terms of CSS and JavaScript. And if I scroll down here, I can see here I have my, uh, how can I say my CSS, external CSS being loaded as follows. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to load the compression tag. So we have load static here up top. So what we want to do is we want to just copy just the compress part and we're just going to say load compress static. Okay, so we want to add that in. So now if we scroll down here to this line here of our CSS, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and add in the tags that we have as is. So for example, for CSS, we need to add in compress um, CSS in the tags, and you need to do it right above your declaration for your CSS um, line that we have here. And I recommend just slightly uh, indenting that so you can click next to it and press tab. So it's within that um, compress uh, in that compress filter. And then you want to add in end compress as well, right below um, your CSS declaration. Just make sure everything is nicely and in line. So we have that as is, as it should be. Right. Perfect, so let's go on ahead and continue. So now we need to do it for our JavaScript file. So you can apply this to all of your CSS files and your JavaScript files. So I'm going to scroll down to my JavaScript declaration. So here it's static .js app.js. So what you want to do here, is you want to look for uh, the, the JavaScript line here. 
So as we can see here, it has the inline part, but we do not need the inline part. We just need compressed JS. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go on ahead and just get this as is. And let's paste that in. And you just want to remove inline. We, we have external JavaScript here. And then of course you want to make sure that you have the end compress here. Like so. And doesn't hurt to just indent that line. All right, so that's how you can go ahead and set up the compression in place. Now we actually need to enable the compression. Okay, so to do so, to actually make this work, we need to go to our settings.py file. And what you can do is go ahead and add in the following um, setting or option. So you're going to say compress underscore enabled equals true. So this is going to be set up and this is going to correlate to what you have with your debug setting. So since we are testing in development, we can set this to true. But of course, when you're working on uh, pushing everything in deployment, this will be set to false. But this is, of course, explained all in details in the docs. So I'd, I will ensure that I go on ahead and add this to the description so you can read more on the finer details. So you want to say compress underscore enabled to true so that we can actually compress our files. All right. So that's the next thing that you're going to want to do. So make sure you've got that all set up and into place and that you've added in the compress tags to your JavaScript, um, where you've referenced your JavaScript uh, file and your CSS file. So that's going to be the tag around and make sure you have load compress static. Now, the reason that it's load compress static is because we're referencing our static files as static right here. So that's why we need to add um, static after the load compress so that we can actually load these compressed um, files and not just the normal files in our static directory. So that's the reason for that. All right, so make sure you've got that all into place. And then what we're going to be doing next is we're actually going to test the process and we're going to continue on from there. All right, so let's continue with the process. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to run Python manage the pie, collect static so we can collect all of those static files from the behind the scenes of Django, especially where our Django admin is concerned. And we want to apply this compression widespread on our Django website. So let's go ahead and do that. So what you can do is head onto your command prompt and you can type in Python manage.py connect static. And so let's go ahead and run that. Okay, we can say yes. So it's gonna create another directory for our static files. And of course it's going to be compressed since we have enabled compression. There we go, so it's created a static files folder. So if we navigate to our explorer here, we can see that we have that static files directory as well, which of course is going to uh, set up a cache for us with our cached files. And of course we have the Django admin here uh, with the files that will of course be set up. All right, so we've got all of that set up and ready to go. Now, the next thing we can do is just go on ahead and run our server. So you can say python manage.py uh, run server, and you can run your server now. Okay, there we go. And we can just refresh. What I'd recommend you also do is just head on over to your browser and you can click here on the three dots here for settings in Google Chrome. You can navigate down to more tools. We can go to developer tools. And you can just right click on the refresh icon, say empty cache and hard reload. And right click again and just say hard reload just for clarity. Okay, there we go. And now let's go on ahead and right click on our source uh, again here. So we can right click, say view page source. And now if we were to zoom in, we can now see that we are serving our cached CSS. So now if I were to click on the CSS, of course, just notice here that it is now showing, is pointing to cache. We can see the output here. So let's go ahead and click on that. We can now see it has been cached here for our CSS file. So we can see all of that logic has been cached for us. And if we go back and we look at our JS, which we also cached, and we optimized it, we compressed it, should I say. So we compressed it here. We can see that's also been compressed for our JS file. 
we can see that's also been compressed as well. All right, so we can see here that we have successfully compressed our static files. And just remember to go ahead and uh, add in the tags. Just remember, you need to add in compress CSS and end compress for CSS files. And you need to add in uh, compress JS and end compress for JavaScript files. So that is effectively how you can go on ahead and compress your static files in Django for your website. So this is going to help to improve the loading times of your website in Django by compressing your static files. So essentially your websites built, if they were built in Django, of course, in this case, will be loaded faster because you have compressed your static files. So there will be an, a speed increase. And that is of course, because you have optimized your static files. All right, guys, so that's it for this video tutorial. As always, thank you for the support and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.